How are you? It's Trucker Ray back with you with an update from Calgary. It is Sunday, the 19th of February, and it is 9.56 Calgary time. And I am just waiting for that place to open up. Leather Pocket Billiards is a really good place to go to and play some pool. That's all it is, is a pool hall. You're not going to find any video games in there. You're not going to find any slot machines. It's just pure pool and billiards and eight ball and snooker. That's what you call a very, very typical old fashioned pool hall. I don't know how long the place has been there. It's probably been there maybe about 10 years or nine or 10 years. So what I mean by old fashioned and a lot of the, a lot of the time you will go to pool halls and they just they have loud banging music in there and it's just it's it's catered to the youth that place is catered to pool players and they have three six by twelve pool tables in there and many uh, four by eights and four and a half by nines and five by tens and uh, three and a half by sevens I think they have a couple in there they just it's just a really down-to-earth or should I say a really good down-to-earth pool room and uh, uh, they open up at 11 o'clock and they have a tournament like the one I participated in before and uh, this time I'm going to try to win it. <laughs> Last time I scratched on the eight ball on the final uh, game and uh, that was my own fault. It was a stupid shot but uh, I won't make that mistake again. And where else can you go and pay ten dollars for an entry fee and you can play pool uh, for several hours and, you can, and then even after the tournament you can go and play for another I don't know, for the rest of the day until 10 o'clock if you really wanted to, if you're really a billiard junkie. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. Uh, this is my last day in this truck. I slept in it last night and uh, kind of feels weird because I'm literally camping out. Last night I had pizza because I don't have anything to cook. I don't have a microwave and uh, so it was kind of fun. But I'll tell you something, it felt really weird this morning walking into the terminal and handing in my fuel cards. Uh, I'm not quite ready to hand over the keys yet. I will hand over the keys uh, today once I get back to the yard at about maybe seven or eight and then uh, call a cab and then make my way to the hotel and check in and uh, begin my new journey with my new company on Monday morning. Uh, this morning I decided to get some breakfast and I normally go to Denny's. Sometimes they have a pretty good breakfast. So I decided to, there's another little uh, restaurant right here. Well, I don't know if you want to call it a restaurant. It's a very, very old cafe. And as you can see, this uh, place has been here a very long time. It's been here since the early 70s. Um, I asked them if the owner of this place has been here since the 70s and they said no, they've only had this place for the last 10 years. Would I recommend it to a good friend? Probably not. <laughs> it, uh, it served its purpose but it wasn't the best food in the world. A lot of it, like the meat in that, was pre-cooked pre and then they eat it later, which a lot of restaurants do, I don't know why. So. But it, you know, it did the trick. If I'm if I'm ever in a rush, I'm, you know, I might do this again, and um, you know, maybe have an omelet or something. But this, I don't think I would eat the same thing I ate last time. But it did its job. I'm not condemning it. I mean, the place has been around since the '70s, and uh, per, that's pretty well probably how old the food is. <laughs> I know, that's terrible. I know. I've just seen better places. That's all. But God bless them. <laughs> Hey, God bless their efforts. I gotta add a little humor into these videos, don't I? Yeah, so I'm just waiting for Leather Pocket Billiards to open up, and they're gonna be open in about another hour, and then I am going to go enjoy a good game of pool. After that, I will make my way back to the yard, and I will hand in my keys. I already handed in my fuel cards earlier. Um, but the keys I will hand in, my ID tag, everything else, take everything else out call a cab and make my way to the hotel. I am very much looking forward to it. And it was very, very neat spending the last night in this truck because you know what, I'm a very sentimental kind of guy. And I was taking a walk yesterday and I was parked over at the Walmart where I normally park. And I was walking and I was just thinking, "Go, you know, Lord, I spent a lot of time complaining about this truck and the creaks and the groans and the dinging, the bonging and everything and the way the transmission works on this thing and I spent a lot of time complaining about it. 
and I came to the realization, Lord, you provided me a home. It was a home and you provided me a job. And uh, I really did some serious repenting last night. I just wanted to thank you for the, for the job you gave me, for the home you gave me, the roof over my head, because it was, it's been a roof over my head. So I think I'll have a little bit more appreciation when I move on with uh, the next company. So, um, and I'm not afraid to admit that, you know, when we, when we know we're wrong about something, we should admit it. We really should. And, uh, and uh, we should repent of it too and bring it to the Lord. And, you know, I think he honors a person who re recognizes and realizes when they're wrong and tries to make amends for it and make up for it. And my way of making up for it is just thanksgiving and thanking him and uh, being appreciative and uh, learning something for the next truck I get into if I have some issues with it. It's still a roof over my head and I have to appreciate it. I just, oh wow, there's ice falling off my truck when I did that. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, I guess I'm gonna relax a little bit and read a little bit of my scripture and uh, we'll wait for the billiard place to open up. Well, it is 5.55 Pacific time and I have checked into my hotel um, just off of McLeod Trail and it's not too far from the Chinook Mall, which is that really, really big mall that I took Christian that time I took my nephew with me. And um, we are settled in and um, it's not a bad place. I mean, it it's uh, in a very, very busy end of town. It's um, It's got restaurant the keg is right next door but i don't like eating at the keg anymore i think you just it's you just end up paying way too much for a little piece of meat and three pieces of asparagus if anyone's ever been there and half the time they can't get your your meal right so sometimes you're almost better off just to order a pizza and save yourself uh, sixty dollars <laughs> so anyway so i went over to the uh leather pocket billiards before i came here and um wanted to play in the uh, eight ball tournament but they refused me they said no you you can't play in it because i guess people were watching how i was playing last last time which was a couple weeks or a few weeks ago and uh i was more or less uh told today that i was too good to play in that tournament so they said uh, you're better off to come on saturdays which is the a a the a side or the a tournament uh, B is amateur, A is more of people that know what they're doing. So I found that more flattering than anything. I mean, I wasn't upset about it. So I more or less spent three and a half hours just playing snooker. I went over and grabbed a set of balls and grabbed one of the tables and uh, just practiced a little bit of snooker and I had a really good time. It was fun. So I am going to just relax for the rest of the night. Maybe I'll watch a couple videos. Maybe I'll watch a little bit of snooker on YouTube and uh, I'll be heading to orientation in the morning and I'll probably be taking some of my belongings with me because I just really don't know if I want to leave a very expensive camera in the hotel room plus my Mac I'll probably take that stuff with me tomorrow but uh, orientation everything begins tomorrow so I'm looking forward to it so that's what's going on right now so I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an update yes we are settled in we are ready to go it was kind of unusual dropping off my truck at the Transex yard and um, uh, yeah, dropping that off at the yard and saying goodbye to the truck and you know, it, it, it was just, that truck was my home for over a year and, um, and then I had another truck before that. So it served its purpose, it did well, but you know the sad thing is? It's, it's weird. A lot of people knew I was leaving and not one person even said anything to me except Saren. And he is the weekend dispatcher. He actually sent me a message. He wanted to put me on a load for tomorrow and I said to him, this is my last day. And he says, no, you're kidding. I went, no, yeah. My driver manager knew, everybody knew, but nobody bothers to tell anybody anything. And he, here he is trying to plan me on something. And, and I said, no, this is my final day. I'm dropping off the truck today. So he said, oh, that's going to really suck to see you go. And I went, oh, wow, somebody actually cares. <laughs> but I figured he would. But he's the only guy. He's the only guy in the entire company that even 
it didn't even matter that I was leaving. So that's okay. I don't like sad goodbyes anyway, but it just it's a little bit disappointing that you put 150% into your job and nobody even notices that you were leaving. And uh, I guess that happens with a lot of big companies. It didn't happen that way with Challenger. I had a lot of people that were sad to see me go. Even with Butterworth, people didn't want to see me go. But this, at that company, I don't know. It's just really weird. So I'm very, very grateful to be going to H&R because so far the people I've talked to there, they just seem very family oriented. And uh, I think it's going to be a really good move for me. So, so that's what's going on for now. I'll be uh, in touch with you guys with another update probably tomorrow. Okay, bye for now.